You're, stick, you're so filthy. No, they're not called that. I finished up painting those doors at about 1am, so I'm a little bit blurry eyed. I'm hoping that if we get the floor cleared down, we can pull the vinyl in and roll it out. Now, when I converted this old garage, it was about three years ago, and this room has been through a series of different uses over those years. All I did is put a 100mm floating floor down with a 22mm chipboard uh, finish. And when I did that, I painted it with a floor paint just to protect it. But of course we've had like plastering going on in here, painting, workshop, glues, all sorts. All of that will show through because we're just using a normal thin domestic vinyl. I think it was about 14 quid and really all it is is a bit of steel on a pole. But it's gonna save crawling around on my knees. I was thinking I was gonna have to sand bits and all sorts, but actually this is leaving a really smooth finish. All those little bits you can't even see are just chipping up and we can back in them up. Lazy bones. Are you having a tea break? Come on, push, Rosa. Okay, three, two, one, roll. Roll. Roll, 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 roll. Okay, keep rolling. Now, let me explain why we went for vinyl first, and then a couple of details on the install. So this is a studio space mainly for Joe's business, craft, painting, um, sewing, that sort of stuff, also some photography work. It doesn't need to be a super luxury floor, but it does need to be quite practical. LVT or laminate might have been a little bit more durable and heavy duty, but more costly. So this sheet of vinyl was £140. It's completely kind of spill proof, waterproof, um, if there's spillages in the room, and it's just gonna do the job until we need to use the room for anything else. So, for that reason, I'm just going for a perimeter fixing, but you can see there, I've rolled back the vinyl and used up a spare can over the floor, just belts and braces, really. It's not like a fully troweled out um, adhesive like you might use for a thick commercial vinyl. Um, it's still going to pull up easy enough, but it just means that because we're four by five meters that in the center of the room There's no chance of things buckling up if we drag a bit of furniture But a bit of adhesive around the outside first to prime the uh, Flooring and then my self adhesive tape is going down that gives it double stickiness And if the floor is not perfectly ideal, then it just makes sure that we get a really good bond This double-sided tape is pretty good stuff. It's just normal double-sided carpet tape uh, but like I say by spraying that spray adhesive down first it really goes nowhere. Now the room is four by five meters and I say four meters it's actually a little bit over so for that reason I needed my skirting board to to make up the difference we're only about 10 mil short each side but I decided to go down with the vinyl first and then we'll sit our skirting boards on top of it. Right the next part of the video is all about the skirting boards We've already got the skirting boards, we bought them from a house clearance when we first moved in here. So they've been kicking around for about seven or eight years. They're just MDF, 
but they're nice and thick and they're also 10 or 11 inches tall they're quite substantial nice molding so we're going to use those up it makes sense to use them in here now i did make a site yesterday and i've got around to this point there's quite a few corners joins mitres and scribes to do so i'll take you through the process of that this is 25 mil mdf like i say and if you're mitering that and such big boards it really can make uh, a bit of a, a meal of it if you don't have the right tool for the job. Fortunately my new mitre saw has been in action and it's just a complete game changer in comparison to my older saw. Most of that's probably to do with a dull blade but this one is just chewing through it so super clean and uh, we're going to get a really nice scarf joint on the joins and also the scribes are much easier with a clean mitre. Now of course it would have been far easier if we hadn't moved all the furniture in already we can work with it. I've done my dry fit. The joins are all where we need them to be and I've just taken a little bit off the bottom of this one to describe it. There was a bit of a hump in the floor. Not too much but worth getting right so we can get this joint neat. So I'm just going straight on with the adhesive and where needed we'll just stack it in with some brads if, if we really need to and there's a little bit of variation in the wall. One or two screws into the studs might be needed. get some screws find the nearest stud and we'll pull that board in remember this is insulated so we're gonna have to use long screws to get in there but it should be that we can get this close enough oh it's always it wrong first corner or internal corner. Now the most important thing to think about when you're doing skirting boards is it's not always going to be a 90 degree corner. However good your framing or your stud walls or whatever are, you're, you're not going to be fortunate enough to have a bang on 90 most of the time. So the way you counteract that is you do a scribe on the corner which is where you shape the end of one board to sit into the shape and profile of the one that's coming across perpendicular to it. So I've scuffed the paint off here a little bit, but you might be able to make out that this profile is mirrored in this cut. I'll show you one of those later on when we go to cut the next one. But for now, we'll just do a last test fit and then we'll get some adhesive on here.
get in there now, I've sorted out that wall and the return end, that side of the door, just doing this section here, then I need to sort out some sort of hidden flappy bit. This is an access hatch, believe it or not, you can just about get through there into the subfloor uh, where plumbing and things like that are, so I figured I would leave that. It looks like it's going to be a similar height to the skirting, so it might be that I can make a section that seals and can be removable. Anyway, I'm going to get this mitre done. This one is a nicer 90 degree than the other one, so that one needs a little bit of filling on the mitre. This one I've worked until I've got it pretty good with the cut. Let me just a bit of wood glue on there. With the smaller trim and architrave and stuff, you saw me when I did the utility area in the laundry area that I used some mites bond pre-assembled sections and then put them in. That's you can really kind of on the bench then you can get things about right um, and get tighter joins and then fit it. This we're filling it, we're painting it. I'm not too concerned, but we still should be able to get a nice join this way in my DIY level budget. So. Slide him along. Should be able to shift across. Like I said, there's a little bit of playtime with this, so we can gradually get it where we need it. Let's see if we can get a couple of these clamps on. These are great for pulling in these mitres, and then all you've got is a couple of little pins to fill afterwards. No prizes for knowing the nickname of these clamps. It's a family show. One down the bottom. <laughs> oh dear, Timothy. Not gonna get much better than that. For my humble DIYer. Now just to prove it never quite goes that way, let me show you the other side. This side might look more familiar because this is quite often how things go for me. This wasn't 90 degrees and I didn't account for that. I'm running really short of this so I didn't want to recut everything. Then uh, the old cardboard MDF uh, snapped off there so I need to glue him in. Uh, but as you can see this mitre is, <laughs> well it's not a mitre, it's about a degree or two off so it's it's open at the front. There, there is adhesive all the way in there but this last few millimeters I'm gonna to have to fill sand and sculpt but I will actually be softening this corner because th these can get pretty sharp with MDF or any skirting really these these external mitres this is right in the doorway so I will be kind of just rounding this off anyway so we don't catch our shins on it that's my excuse anyway so I'm gonna get that corner done then I'm gonna hand the baton on to Jo she's gonna come in fill the holes do the corking sand it back and then we'll get it painted tonight and then we can hopefully get all this furniture moved back in place there's also a nine foot dresser in the van or half of one any guesses what those clamps are called corner clamps corner clamps is a good one think a little bit more dirty why are you doing that <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what i just thought is that uh, actually you're, stick, stick you're so filthy. No, they're not called that. Bananas. No, actually, it's not Willy, but you're on the right line. Try to say it. Cock and ball. No way. Yeah. So we decided to make a date of it and spent the evening getting all of the painting done, all of the final touches so that the room was almost ready for all the furniture. The very last thing that we wanted to do was just to seal our skirting boards to our flooring. And that will just make up for any of the slight variations in that join between the skirting board and the flooring. 
It'll also neaten things up and more importantly, make sure that any spillages or wet shoes or boots or a bit of rain coming in the door, there's no risk of that getting in and getting trapped, especially with this being MDF skirting boards. So that's a good way to neaten things up. These tools are great and I'll leave a link to those down in the description. Tell you what, for 140 pound super budget vinyl, some clearance MDF skirting board that we've been hoarding and what was just a tumble down asbestos covered garage. This room is looking all right. Quite pleased with it to be quite honest. Once this is sorted, 